I'm oral historian Mike Chappelle. Today, June 5th, 2011, I'm interviewing Dr. Samuel Refitoff for the Endocrine Society at its annual meeting being held this year at the Boston Convention and Exhibition Center. So my work on thyroid hormone resistance uh, began in Los Angeles in the latter part of uh, 1964 with the identification of uh, a family with three children uh, that had high thyroid hormone levels but did not manifest the expected uh, uh, symptoms and signs that will result from too much hormone, suggesting some form of abnormal hormone and resistance. Um, uh, the initial work went to proving that the hormone was an authentical hormone, which was not easy at the time where there was no direct uh, uh, test to measure the hormone, which I just mentioned before, and involved uh, a rather more sophisticated biochemistry work, um, including the use of snake venom to prove that it's an L amino acid and so forth. Um, so with, with that, um, uh, there was a long term of clinical studies in, during which these children uh, were given uh, various forms of thyroid hormone and some of the even analogs of thyroid hormone in studies that took uh, us through the 72. I think um, we had a case that was convincing that these children had a problem with the recognition of thyroid hormone, namely the receptor. And then there's a hiatus until 1989 because the receptor was unknown. And so in 1989, um, two laboratories, um, one of uh, Bjorn Wenström in Sweden and one here in the United States, uh, Evans, um, identified uh, the two horm thyroid hormone receptor called alpha and beta. One was in humans and the other in chicken. So with the identification of the thyroid hormone receptor, uh, there was a tool now to find whether any of those individuals had a defect in the receptor. By that time, there were uh, at least 15 families already recognized to have such a defect. So we were not the only one that um, um, identified a mutation in the thyroid hormone receptor gene. So that opened the field into understanding uh, how those mutations caused resistance to thyroid hormone and why it manifested in a dominant fashion where the individual had, could synthesize both normal and abnormal receptor. And then the concept of dominant negative effect which means that the mutant receptor interferes with the function of the normal receptor arose and, um, and um, I think opened the field into understanding um, um, some aspect of how nuclear uh, receptors work. Now as work progressed, uh, we could go back to the original family where the inheritance was recessive to find that they didn't have dominant negative effect because instead of having a mutant receptor, they just had deletion of the entire receptor. So there was, when only one was deleted, the other was normal, it didn't give any condition, but when both were dropped off, there was. And um, in fact, uh, out of probably um, now more than 3,000 cases, uh, this original family remains the only one that had the deletion of the entire gene. However, and I'm talking more about it because it's the subject of my interest, um, as many groups got involved in, in work with the thyroid hormone resistance, it became apparent that there is a subgroup of individual representing 15% of people that have the clinical phenotype that have no mutations in the receptors. And that has been proven again by cost segregation analysis, uh, proving that it's not that the mutation was missed, but it is impossible that this could be caused by mutation in the receptor. So this is where we stand now. Um, uh, several groups, including mine, are working hard to find out 
what is the cause for this target hormone resistance. Uh, in our case, we have identified 27 families already. Um, to have the clinical uh, phenotype that is undistinguishable clinically from, from those with uh, mutation in the receptor, but they don't have mutation in the receptor. There are various theories. Um, naturally, good candidates are proteins that are involved in the complex uh, that involves the receptor, and through that, mediating the, the um, gene transcription, but there is no exact uh, cause yet known.